Hello dear listeners, you are welcome to the platform again. And today we want to look at a particular poem titled The Graved Lands of Africa, written by Agostinho Neto. So today in this lesson we are going to look at the background of the poet and of the poem and also the foregrounding notes on the poem, under which we have the structure of the poem, the form of the poem, and the subject matter of the poem. So let's start it one after the other. From the background of the poets, Agostino Oneto had his early education at Loanda Secondary School, and thereafter he proceeded to the University of Cumbria, where he obtained his degree in law. And also, he happened to be the first president of the Sovereign Republic of Angola at independence in 1975. With this, his bitter experience in the hand of the Portuguese colonial masters hardened his hatred for the European colonization in Africa. And not only this, the man lived between, or let me say he was born in September 17th, 1922, and so he lived between that 1922 till 1979. If I should calculate it, that should be 52 years before he died of a cancer in Moscow, Russia. So, the poet was a trained doctor, a poet, and also a prisoner of uh, conscience, that is, in Portugal for two years before he escaped. The man was also a freedom fighter and a politician. Agostinho Neto was the leader of a particular group, a movement that is called MPLA, that is, the Movement for the Liberation of the Angolan People. The movement was the most popular of the three fronts that led armed struggles for the freedom and independence of Angola. Now to the uh, brief summary of the poems. Uh, the poem. The poet's poem draws its subject matter from the vision that shot him out to get involved in a freedom fight for his country. That is, he proved to be a patriotic uh, citizen of uh, Angola. That is the brief summary of the background of the poet and of the poem. So we are now proceeding to the foregrounding notes of the poem. I'm going to structure. The Grieved Lands of Africa is a 52-line poem. The lines of the poem are not the conventional type. When we say conventional, it means it does not go with end rhyme schemes or any rhyme schemes of uh, such. That is conventional. And the title, especially from the word grieved, is suggestive that the whole poem discusses the subject matter of the all-time sovereigns of African nations, right from inception, that is, the colonial era. The poet crafts the grief lands of Africa in the features of main stanza and refrain parts, and seven of such refrains as we have it in the poem. So, a piece of the message in the, uh, in the poem is located in each of the stanzas, that is, a portion, and the refrain is made to emphasize each of the points as conveyed in the poem. Refrain is the limit of the boundary of a piece of message in the poem. So each of the stanzas of the poem has the message it passes. That is about the structure of the poem. Now to the form of the poem. The poem is both a lamentation and a clarion call construct. That is, the poet laments 
as pertaining to his experience during the time of colonization in the hand of uh, the Portuguese colonial masters. And also, the poem is a clarion call. That is, the poet is trying to persuade and preach, have the preachment of the embracement of a African nation. That is, all African countries should be one and unite amongst one another in order to make sure that they push Africa as a continent to the shore of a success and a freedom. That is a, a clarion core construct. And not only that, the poem is a lamentation or is lamentation in form because the poet enumerates the nature of suffering peculiar to Africa's social political milieu, that is the context of social and political aspect of a African style. It is also a clarion call because the poet's empathy, that is the pity of the poet as pertaining to the continent called Africa, is clearly registered that hope is not lost yet, as we all hope for a new day. So if people will gather their acts together and do the needful, Africa as a continent and the nations of Africa will be good again. That is the form of the poem. Now to the last point on the uh, list, we have the subject matter. As it is already noted in the poem's title, the subject matter is about the year-long sovereigns that have remained ever as the lot of Africa and its people. Even if there's no physical or clearly seen slave trade any longer, people are still being what? Under mental uh, slavery as of today. So the poem is a metaphor in respect of African social political problems. It is a well known uh, opinion that African nations at large, what we have is leadership problem. Or not until God interferes into this before we have a peaceful coexistence in Africa. So this is all, all about uh, today's topic. And I uh, urge you to subscribe to the channel. Also enable your bell for notification on some videos that will be uploaded on the platform or the channel. So with this, let me say have a beautiful day ahead. And thank you. Always remain safe.